Welcome back, first grade. It's Miss Van Wert. Today we are learning about writing in Mesopotamia. Our learning objectives are to review the importance of canals and the contributions of King Hammurabi in Mesopotamia, describe the importance of writing in Mesopotamia, demonstrate an understanding of the word symbols and the phrase the golden rule, Use a graphic organizer to identify types of writing and the contributions of King Hammurabi in Mesopotamia. Identify the type of writing and the contributions of King Hammurabi in Mesopotamia. Our key vocabulary are cuneiform, records, scribes, symbols, and tablets. Cuneiform is a noun. In cuneiform is the system of writing in Mesopotamia using wedge-shaped symbols. The teacher showed her class the cuneiform on the ancient tablet. So if you look at this right here, all those little shapes, all those little grooves in that tablet, that is cuneiform. Those are the symbols, okay, that they used, and that says something. I don't know what it says, but it says something. Records. Records is also a noun. Records are pieces of information written down in order to remember them. My mother keeps records of all the bills that she has paid. If you look in this picture, it's probably um, some kind of office and you can see they've got all those records. All those folders have different um, important information that was written down so that they can remember them, okay? Scribes. Scribes is a noun. Scribes are people whose job it is to write things down, okay? The scribes wrote the laws on clay tablets. Symbols. Symbols is also a noun. Symbols are pictures or shapes used to stand for something else. The letters of our alphabet are symbols for sounds. Huh. A, the letter A, is the symbol for the sound A. Ah. Letter L is the symbol for the sound O. And if you look at these, we've got some math symbols. This is the symbol for plus or to add. This is the symbol for division or div to divide. This is the, the, the symbol for subtraction or to minus something, so take something away. And this, if I move my face, is the symbol to multiply, okay? Tablets. Tablets is also a noun. Tablets are flat slabs of stone, clay, or wood used especially for writing. The explorer found a very old poem carved into stone tablets by people long ago, okay? So that's what they had instead of paper. They wrote them on clay or stone or wood blocks, pretty much, okay? All right, so let's review where is Mesopotamia. So who can tell me what color is the continent of Asia? Asia is all of the green, okay? All of the green is Asia. And where is Mesopotamia? It's in the Middle East. Remember, Middle East is over here. It's the darker green. It's near Middle East. Now, where's Mesopotamia? Mesopotamia is right here, okay, in what we now call Iraq, all right? Okay. So, in the previous lesson, you learned about a father and a son in Mesopotamia. Who can point to Adin? Which one is Adin? Adin is this one, the middle one. Who can point to his father, Woe Red? Right here. And what did Wohred and Idin talk about as they walked along the banks of the Euphrates River? What did they talk about? They talked about 
how the rivers help and how the rivers are so important to the city of Babylon, right? What are canals? Canals are like little roads, but they're water roads that were dug so that the water can go from the river to the houses that are not right next to the river, right? King Hammurabi was responsible for building canals in Mesopotamia. He had canals dug to move water all over Mesopotamia from the two rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates. King Hammurabi and his helpers also collected waters in a reservoir so that there would be water for drinking and for watering crops. This allowed people to settle in one place near the river and make that place better and better. This became the city of Babylon. My face keeps getting in the way. Oopsie, I didn't mean to do that. All right, today you're gonna learn more about Wohred and Adin, and you will meet a boy, another boy from Mesopotamia, Adin's brother, Omor. This is Omor. As, a, as the father and his sons talk, you will learn more about King Hammurabi and the decisions the king made that helped shape the Mesopotamian civilization. The main topic for today's read aloud is writing. Who can tell me how do we use writing today? What do we use it for? To write letters, to write down important things. I know I write, um, I use writing to make my grocery lists and to make my plans for when I teach you guys. We use writing all the time, right? Okay, what do we need in order to write in English? So what if I said, okay, we're gonna write today, what kind of things would you need? Something to write with, so like some kind of pencil or pen or a marker or a crayon, right? And what would you write on? paper, right? I mean, I guess we could write on other things, but really the main thing that we write on is paper. Do you think that all languages use the same shapes to write the words they, they say? So do you think that every single language uses our alphabet? Let's see if you're right. Okay, remember our key vocabulary, our cuneiform records, scribes, symbols, and tablets. I want you to listen carefully to find out what Mesopotamian writing looked like and how people used it as well as where, what else the king, oh my goodness, as well as what else King Hammurabi did for Mesopotamia. The day after Adin and his father, Wohred, had their conversation about King Hammurabi, a, Adin and his older brother, Omor, were out kicking a leather ball. Do you see the ball? When the boys went inside to cool off, they found their father, Wellred, sitting at a wide table in the sunny central courtyard around which the house was built. On the table lay several tablets, smooth rectangles made of clay. So during the time that Adin lived, people wrote on clay tablets because paper didn't exist yet, okay? Because remember, we talked about Mesopotamia happened a long, long, long time ago, okay? All right. Wedge-shaped symbols were pressed into the clay. This sort of writing is called cuneiform, okay? So remember, symbols are pictures or shapes used to stand for something else. The letters of our alphabet are symbols that, stand, that stand for sounds. This is an image of a clay tablet from Mesopotamia, and the symbols you see stand for words or numbers. Okay, so each of these things stand for a word or a number. What are you reading, Father? Omar asked. Wohred looked up and smiled. This first tablet shows how much cloth we have sold this month in our store. The other shows how much we sold during the same time last year. I am comparing the numbers, deciding how much cloth I will need to buy from the weaver for the store next week. These sorts of records help me remember how much we sold last year. 
Otherwise, I would probably forget. So remember, records are pieces of information that are written down in order to remember them. So you might keep a record or a list of your friend's birthdays so you don't forget. I have all of your birthdays written down in my planner so that I don't forget. All right, so what did Adin's father, Woread, keep a record of? What was it that he was writing down? How much cloth he sold from last year, right? Okay. Adin sat, oopsie. Adin sat down on a wooden bench next to the table. Father, he asked, who figured out how to write in the first place? Who decided what each symbol meant? That's a pretty good question, isn't it? Before Woread could answer, Omar said, the king did it. Isn't that right, father? King Hammurabi can do anything. Woread said gently, well, Omar, our king has done many wonderful things, but someone else made up writing even before the king was born. And Adin, I'm afraid that we don't know exactly who it was that figured out how to write and decide what each symbol should mean. Adin laughed. Maybe they should have kept a record on clay tablets in cuneiform. Woread laughed too. Well, whoever it was did us all a great favor. If we couldn't write, it would be harder to remember information for long periods of time. Adin interrupted. Like how much cloth you sold last year? Warred smiled, like how much cloth, cloth I, I sold last year. People around here, between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers, have known about writing for nearly 1,500 years. That's a really long time. That's important. In fact, King Hammurabi may not have invented writing, but he had a great idea about how to use it. Hammurabi was so powerful that he made up a set of rules or laws for people to live by so that they would know how to behave in different situations. Then he had his scribes write them down. Scribes are people whose job it is to write things down. Actually, your uncle, my brother, is one of the scribes who helped the king write down the laws of our country. This set of laws is called the Code of Hammurabi. There were 282 laws in all. Wow, that's a lot of laws. That's a lot of laws, exclaimed Adin. That must have taken Uncle and the other scribes a long time to write, he, ha he hesitated. How did Uncle get to be a scribe anyway? Our father, your grandfather, was a scribe, and that is why all of our family members can read and write. Your grandfather taught your uncle, and he taught me. We are lucky that we know how to read and write, and if your uncle and others had not written down all the laws of King Hammurabi, who could remember 282 of them? Adin asked. Exactly, said Wilred. Omar, what do you think would happen if we couldn't remember the, 20, the 282 laws? Let me ask you guys a question. Do you think you could remember 282 laws or rules? I don't think I could. Writing down two, all 282 laws helped the people remember them, which also helped them to be better, uh, to better live by the laws. If people weren't sure whether they could do something, they would just look at the clay tablets with the laws and see what the laws said. Okay. Do you guys have any, uh, we have classroom rules, right? Those are kind of like laws. And our classroom rules are on our No David Pit poster, right? Where we talk about how we should walk in the hallway and use indoor voices and share with each other and be kind to each other, right? Okay, the older boy said, if we couldn't remember the laws, people wouldn't follow the same rules. Someone visiting another town might break the town's rules without even knowing it. Well, Red said, and Adin, what if I gave you one set of rules and I gave Omar a different set of rules? <gasps> Is that fair, guys? No, that wouldn't be fair, said Adin, unless I like my rules better than his. <laughs> they all laughed. Then Amor said, I like writing for another reason, too. After Uncle visited us, I wrote down that story he told us about being caught in the sandstorm in the desert and how they had to lie down and cover their heads when the strong wind blew the sand so hard all around them 
I read it to Adin last night. Adin smiled. Maybe you should write a story about us. His brother thought about it. Then he answered, that is a funny idea, Adin. But who would want to read a story about us? Who's reading a story about them right now? We are, right? Then the boys went back outside to play some more. All right, guys. Now we are going to do some comprehension questions and word work. If you need a quick little break, go ahead and take one, all right? Okay. So what was the main topic or main idea of today's read aloud? What did we learn about? We learned about the writing in ancient Mesopotamia, right? We learned about the writing and why it was important, what kind of things it was used for, okay? What was the Mesopotamian writing called? Cuneiform, okay? Can you say that? It's kind of a weird thing to say. So everybody say cuneiform. All right. Describe how the Mesopotamians made cuneiform. What did they do? They pressed wedge-shaped symbols or markings into the rectangles made of clay, right? What was the code of Hammurabi? What was the code of Hammurabi? The many laws that Hammurabi, the king of Mesopotamia, had written down and which everyone was expected to follow, right? Also, did you notice when I was reading that um, Wo Red had told them that not everybody knows how to read and write? So they didn't really like, they didn't have to go to school the way that you guys did, okay? So they didn't really, not everybody got to learn how to read, which is kind of sad if you think about it because reading is awesome. You get to learn all these cool things and you get to hear really cool stories. So it'd be kind of sad if we didn't know how to read or if we didn't know how to write, right? Okay. So why was writing important to a civilization such as Mesopotamia? So why was it so important that they had writing? To help them what? It helped people write down and remember their laws. Without writing, the laws might have changed much more frequently, and without writing down the laws, it would have been really hard for them to follow them. Because who remembers how many laws there were? 282! That's a lot of things to remember! Okay? All right. How was Mesopotamian writing different from ours? How is it different? Well, they don't use pencils or pens or crayons or markers, right? What do they use? They're pushing wedge-shaped symbols into what? Into paper? No, not to paper. Into clay or dirt or wood tablets, okay? Or I guess not dirt. Well, it was clay, wood, or stone. Sorry, I mixed that up. All right, how is it the same as our writing? Because they're using symbols to mean something, right? And to relay messages or to remember things. All right, so in the read aloud, you heard wedge-shaped symbols were pressed into the clay. I want you to say the word symbols with me. Symbols. Can you say it in a mouse voice? Symbols. Get down. How about in a whisper voice? Symbols. Good. All right, so symbols are pictures or shapes used to stand for something else. Question marks are symbols that are sometimes used at the end of sentences, and that's how you know they're questions, right? Can you think of any other symbols that you've seen? I want you to try to use the word symbol or symbols when you talk about it. What's the word we've been talking about? Symbols, good. Okay, now we're going to do. Um, a stand up, sit down. Ready? So I'm going to read several sentences to you. If the sentence describes a symbol, you should say, that is a symbol, and you're going to stand up. If it does not describe a symbol, you should say, that is not a symbol, and you're going to stay sitting down. So here we go. The red traffic light tells the drivers to stop. 
That is a symbol, right? Because we know that when we see it, we have to stop. The letter I stands for a sound. That is a symbol, right? The letter I stands for the I, I, I sound. My sister Mara is very pretty. That's not a symbol. It's a nice thing to say about your sister, but it's not a symbol. The weather report shows a picture of a sun to tell viewers that it'll be a sunny day. That is a symbol, right? Showing a picture of the sun lets us know or tells us that it's going to be sunny. All right. My dog's name is Gunther. That's not a symbol. That's just a name. All right. Hang on. Now we're going to talk. Uh, actually, I think that's later. Just kidding. Okay. So what have you learned from the read aloud about cuneiform and writing in Mesopotamia. What are some things you've learned? I want you to pause the video and tell somebody. Okay, we learned that they did it on stone, clay, or wood tablets, right? Because they didn't have paper. And they carved or pressed, um, wedge-shaped symbols that represented numbers or letters, right? Or numbers or words, okay. And what did they use, what did they write down? All of the 282 laws, right? Okay, so Hammurabi's code, which was the 282 laws, was carved into a stone pillar and was not written on paper, right? Because they didn't have paper. I want you to share with your partner what you learned in the read aloud about Hammurabi and the code of Hammurabi. So pause the video and tell someone either at your home or at your table. Okay, 282 laws were inscribed on a huge pillar. Okay, so this card would go in the leader's column because it's gonna help you remember that the Mesopotamians had a leader or a king and that they had laws, okay? Remember, a leader is, a very, important, is very important to the development of a civilization, okay? King Hammurabi was not only responsible for writing all the laws, but he also oversaw the building of the canals that you've heard about. So King Hammurabi did a lot of things for his for the city of Babylon, right? And for Mesopotamia. All right. Um, really quickly, because I forgot to go over this when we were doing our word work, I want you to remember that Woread said that the writing was important because it enabled them to write down their laws in order to remember them more easily. So there's one law or rule that many different people in many different times and places called the golden rule. And many people still follow this rule today. It's not an official law in our country, but is always a famous saying that people try to live by. Okay. So raise your hand if you have ever heard somebody say, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Every single one of you should have your hand raised because we've talked about this a few times in first grade, okay? And that just means to treat other people the way that you want to be treated, right? So if you want to be treated kindly, you should treat other people kindly. And that is the golden rule, okay? That is the rule that people should try to live by, okay? So... You're not expected to be able to read what is written because the, you guys are still learning all of the rules for decoding. But if we were to write it down and put it in our classroom, I would want you to know that the golden rule is the one that is most important to me and to a lot of your other first grade teachers, okay? All right, so... If you were going to be following the golden rule, meaning if you were going to treat other people the way you wanted to be treated, in these situations, I want you to tell me what kinds of things you might do. So if your friend falls down and scrapes her knee on the playground, 
What should you do? If you're following the golden rule, what should you do? You should probably go check on her and make sure she's okay. Maybe offer to get her a Band-Aid or maybe some ice, right? Because you would want somebody to do that for you. If I fell down and scraped my knee, I hope that somebody would come and help me and ask me if I was okay, maybe give me some ice or a Band-Aid, right? So I would do the same thing for them because that's how I would want to be treated. Okay, what if um, your little brother or your little sister is annoying you? What what would you do? What would you do? Would you hit them? No, because you wouldn't want to be hit, right? Could you use your words and tell them, please stop doing that? I don't like that. Yeah, that's what you would do because you would like somebody to tell you instead of yell at you or hit you or be mean to you, right? What if you notice that there's a new student and that new student has nobody to play with? What would you do? You would go and see if they wanted to play with you. Maybe include them in the game that you're playing with your friends. Introduce them to your friends, right? Because that's what you would want somebody to do for you. All right. Okay, let's go over our learning objectives. Make sure that we did all of them. So. We reviewed the importance of canals and the contributions of King Hammurabi in Mesopotamia. We described the importance of writing in Mesopotamia. We were able to demonstrate an understanding of the word symbols and the golden rule. Um, we are going to use a graphic organizer to identify the type of writing and contributions of King Hammurabi in Mesopotamia. And we were able to identify the type of writing and the contributions of Hammurabi in Mesopotamia. So that means we did all of it. Good job, guys. Can't wait to see you tomorrow.